Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the second shelf. Some time ago, if you're following my channel, you might remember I did a video every month about new releases, which I, in the beginning, called TBR to be released, and then I just called it new releases every month. And then I just stopped because reasons. <laughs> It just, you know, fell fell off the wagon and out of my head. And I thought, well, I actually like looking at new releases and talking to you about new releases. So why, why am I not at least reviving it in a certain sense and do it quarterly? So, you know, uh, obviously the seasons, uh, spring, summer, fall and winter. Um, and because it's August, it's a perfect time to restart, in a way, um, um, these videos and look at the new releases in the fall of 2021. And in order, there are many, many more that I'm, you know, interested in, but I pick seven. Seven is my favorite number, so I pick seven. Um, and fall, for me, means September, October, November. And then we will get winter, of course, December, January, February. Yeah, so let's see uh, whether th this is something that I, you know, can remember and actually do. <laughs> anyway, we we will start with the fall new releases, um, and I'm not gonna do categories like I did in these previous videos, but I'm just gonna pick seven books and. Um, um, mention them in the order that they are published, uh, so from first uh, to last, obviously. Yeah. Let's just stop babbling and get into the books, please, shall we? And the first book is a 21st of September release. And by the way, release dates, I just look at the earliest release dates. I'm not looking whether it's UK, US, whatever. If I can, if I in Europe can get the book, that's my release date. So you might want to check if you are in Australia or Africa, South America, the release date that I give you might not be the one that you will be able to get the book. I'm sorry about that. I'm Eurocentric. <laughs> anyway, so the first book uh, will be released on the 21st of September. And that's no surprise if you follow my channel. Um, that's Ruth Oseki, The Book of Form and Emptiness. Um, I love Ruth Oseki's work. I just recently read a very short sort of um, memoir-ish uh, non-fiction book, The Face, where she looks in the mirror for, th for two hours. Um, I will talk about that in a Friday Reads uh, at some point. And of course, I loved A Tale for the Time Being. Yeah, I just like her style. I think she's an intelligent um, writer with her just her own thing. She does her own thing, and I always appreciate that. Um, having said that, or I say that because normally, if it weren't weren't for Ruth Oseki, I would probably not pick up this book because it's a child narrator, a fourteen year old boy, uh, Benny. Um, who lost his father, and uh, in the aftermath of the grief, uh, while his mother becomes a hoarder, uh, he starts to hear voices, um, uh, things talking to him, like, you know, a baseball bat or um, a, a pillow or something. He can't really understand what they, uh, those things are saying, but he can get the gist of um, the mood, the, the emotion, whether it's, you know, something cheerful or painful or, and then the story develops from there and there will be a special book, hence the title, The Book of Form and Emptiness. Like I said, this would not, if I just read this summary, this would not normally be a book that I gravitate towards uh, for various reasons, you know, magical realism, it sounds like, and the child narrator, but it's Ruth Oseki, so I'm going to read it anyway. There you go. 21st of September. Uh, a week later, on the 28th of September, uh, another uh, earlier book favorite of mine, an Australian author, Emily Bitto, with her new novel, Wild Abandon. The novel that I really loved is, I read one book by her, and that's um, uh, The Strays, which won the Stella Prize maybe two years ago or something. Uh, and I love that book. So again, when I look at the summary, which I will give you in a minute, it wouldn't have been a book that I would have uh, gravitated towards normally if it hadn't been for the author. 
Um, the book is about a young Australian man, Will, uh, who as a tourist travels to the United States. Uh, first to New York, where he hooks up with a former enemy of his or something. I, I think that name is Jack and, and the girlfriend, and they are just about to make it in the art scene. And then Will embarks on a road trip um, uh, out west, and he meets a uh, war veteran, I think Wayne, uh, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, and that, you know, sort of the the story comes to the conclusion uh, the road trip and the story with these two men road trip not my thing at all i don't like road movies and i don't like road trip uh books normally but there are always exceptions if i'm were to think about it i I'm, I'm sure that i can come up with a handful of books that i really loved that were actually about a road trip um, and the same with road movies and in this case like I said it's Emily Bitto I just want to read her next book because I loved The Strays so much so 28th of September the new release Wild Abandoned by Emily Bitto Okay, then we move on to October, um, and the first one is uh, will be released on the 5th of October, and that's another favorite author of mine, and again, another story that I probably wouldn't um, pick up if it hadn't been for this author, and that is Miriam Taves' uh, new novel, Fight Night. Uh, Miriam Taves, a Canadian author, and I just love her work. Uh, Women Talking was one of my favorites uh, last year, I think. I read it last year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, My Puny Sorrows. I really loved her uh, memoir about her uh, family um, and depression. Um, The Swing, something with the Swing Low. Um, I just love her work. And again, this one is about a child narrator. You have nine-year-old, that's even worse, then a 14-year-old, uh, Swift, who lives with her pregnant mother um, in um, Canada, um, together with also the grandmother, who is seems to be quite lively. Um, and um, there is no father in the picture for some reason or the other. And then the grandmother, um, uh, when Swift is kicked out of school, that's the premise, the grandmother takes on the role of the teacher um, and they write letters to the unborn child, the brother or sister that will come. Um, again, it's not a premise that immediately would normally grab me, uh, even though I have to say I always like stories uh, with multi-generational women so, you know, you have a, a grandmother, a daughter, and a granddaughter. I, I, that's something I like. Uh, but I certainly would prefer to have a different voice and not have, you know, the nine-year-old. But you, you never know. I mean, I'm just assuming that it's a child narrator, but it could just as well be that the grandmother tells a story or that it's multiple perspectives. So maybe I should hold my horses here. But anyway, it's Miriam Taves, I Don't Care, 5th of October, her new novel, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. I should, like, finish the sentence, look forward to it. Anyway, the next one, also an October release, a week later, 12th of October, a nonfiction book by Janet Winterson, 12 Bites. Uh, Janet Winterson, of course, a um, uh, UK author, one of my favorite authors, if you contemporary authors, if you follow my channel, I read everything she puts out there. I don't love everything, but I love her work enough to read everything she uh, she publishes. Um, and this one, Twelve Bites, as I said, is a nonfiction work, and it's twelve essays all around the theme of artificial intelligence. Uh, by the way, I I'm shallow, but I love the cover. I really do. Oops, I love it so much that I almost threw the camera off <laughs> the table. Um, and if you have read previous works by Janet Winterson, she is um, uh, artificial intelligence and the topics around that is something that comes back again and again in her work. The latest, her latest novel, Frankenstein, was partly about um, artificial intelligence. Um, but also, uh, 
I think I'm gonna sneeze soon, then I will have to cut this off. No, no, not sneeze, don't sneeze. Um, anyway, uh, The Stone Gods is also about this idea of a kind of artificial intelligence or a robot uh, with intelligence. So it, it seems that this is something that keeps her occupied. And now, obviously, she wanted uh, uh, to put that in nonfiction essays. I'm very interested in this whole topic. I know very little about it in terms of, you know, the actual technology necessary and the algorithms involved and things like that. But I think it's a fascinating topic and something that will be important for us in the 21st century. So 12th of October, 12 Bytes uh, by Janet Winterson. And we move on to November. And because I said there will be seven books that I um, will be talking to you about, there will be three books for November. Yeah, I can do math. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, the first book uh, will be published on the 2nd of November, and that is The Perishing by Natasha Dion. Uh, Natasha Dion is a Black American writer, and I had been meaning to read her debut, Grace, which came out, I think, five years ago, 2016, since it came out, but I never did. So it's still on my to-read list, and now she comes out with a new novel, so I will probably read the new novel first, and I hope it will not take five years or even longer, because I still haven't read Grace. Anyway, The Perishing. Historical fiction um, about um, um, an immortal black woman. I mean, what more do you need? You had me at hello, right? <laughs> but a little more about the premise. So there, Los Angeles in the 1930s, um, uh, we have Lou who wakes up um, in an alley, a back alley in Los Angeles without any memory how she got here. Just this idea, this feeling, this sort of vague notion that she had experienced this kind of situation before. But she tries not to think about it. She's taken in by a foster family. She uh, puts all her energy into studying. She becomes the first black female uh, journalist at the Los Angeles Times. And then, of course, things happen and she has to face her his history, her past, um, the way she exists, as I understood, as a, an immortal woman. That sounds absolutely fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> um and the the idea of the 1930s is a is an interesting time to you know to read about uh, to set a book about the first black female journalist at the Los Angeles Times and like i said they had me at hello so the perishing by natasha dion on the 2nd of november then a week later, on the 9th of November, uh, we have two books, and the first one is Louise Edric, The Sentence. Now, if you follow my channel, you will remember that I had last year the project of reading all of Louise Edric's novels uh, in chronological chronological order publication year and I did that together with Terry uh, from Miss Terry Reads and we finished this April with the last book, The Night Watchman. But of course, we will read this book together because now you have to sort of keep finishing the project, I feel. So as long as Louisa Edrick uh, puts out work, uh, I will read it and hopefully uh, together with Terry. Anyway, The Sentence is uh, a book uh, set in one in a one year period uh, between All Souls Day uh, 2019, I think, and then All Souls Day 2020, but the year is not really that important. And But All Souls Day is important because there is a soul just wouldn't leave. You have Flora and she died on All Souls Day, uh, but she wouldn't leave the bookstore where the whole story is set. And then you have uh, uh, another woman who was incarcerated and survived the incarceration because of she read a lot, who is now working in the bookstore and trying to find a way, you know, to put Flora at rest. That sounds quirky, funny, Again, I'm not big with the ghost and the magical realism, but with some authors, I can handle it. And Louisa Edrick, uh, now that I've read all of her 16 previous novels, she always has, um, or a lot of times, there are 
talking animals um, uh, or ghosts that haunt people or help people. And it worked, even though I, I'm not a big fan it worked. It's like with Jess Kidd, you know, the uh, the hoarder, uh, her book, where you have these uh, spirits or ghosts. With some authors, it works. And with Louise Erdrich, it normally really works. So I, I, I feel that it's one of the more, you know, quirky books. Um, and the fact that it's set in a bookstore is an additional perk, of course. And the last of the seven is, of course, sci-fi slash fantasy because that's how I always ended my previous videos you know about new releases and some things they never change anyway so the other nine uh, uh, uh November 9th release is by Nady Okorafor Noor um now Nady Okorafor is an African futurist I used to say Afrofuturist but one of my viewers subscribers um uh, told me that that's not how she identifies. So she says African futurist. So that's why I use the term African futurist. Um, anyway, so <laughs> Nady Okorafor is an African futuristic writer and her work is a kind of hit and miss for me. I liked some of the Binti books, not all of them. Um, I had trouble with some of her more African mythology based books but still she is I'm interested in her work so I will always she's one of these authors even if a book doesn't work for me I will always have you know the tendency to try the next one if that makes sense anyway and Noor sounds really interesting I'm just gonna check the name of the main character I'm sorry Anvuli um, Anvuli is um, a young woman um, and she calls herself an AO, not an OA, an original angel like in the Netflix series, no, but an AO, an artificial, artificial organism, because obviously her body is not um, without issues. I don't know exactly what, but when she was born, her parents already prayed for her, you know, passing because, yeah. But she lived and then she had a car accident and that disabled her even more. That's what you can read on Goodreads. Um, uh, but she embraces uh, the way she is. She embraces her body until one day she goes to the market and everything goes wrong from there. That's how far I read uh, the story because I think the rest I don't want to know. But doesn't that sound absolutely fascinating? I mean, the fact that uh, Okora Ford uh, tackles uh, disability is maybe not too surprising. Um, if you have read her memoir, uh, the title of which uh, completely esca escapes me at the moment. Um, uh, I can't remember. Let me just check. Um, no, I can't find it. Um, at least not fast enough. If I'm, if I remember, I will put the the title here under the screen. But anyway, I read her memoir, and she used to be um, an athlete, and then had an accident, and had to spend time uh, uh, in in the hospital. And you know, so, so the fact of a, of a body, um, um, a disabled body, or how that works, is something that obviously fascinates her. And I think, yeah, it's it sounds like a great premise. And it's, yeah, like I said, Okora 4, I'm always willing to try her again. So uh, Noor coming out on the 9th of November is the seventh book in the new fall releases that I'm excited about. I hope you are excited uh, too about uh, the fall releases that I presented to you, or maybe you have a fall release of your own that you are excited about. Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, every comment is welcome. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.